Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Roost Leak Detector, or Smart Environmental Sensor, I'm going to call it, because it does more than just detect leaks. Uh, what you're looking at is a kind of egg-shaped sensor. On the top here, you can see it has the Roost logo, as well as these perforations. This is because you will get an auditory warning uh, if this detects leaks, as well as a alert on your smartphone. That's, that's primarily the reason I got this. It is a smart home device without actually having to uh, spend an arm and a leg to smarten up your home. But let's get back to the general specifications of this particular item first. You are looking at a length of 3.5 inches in length, a width of 2.5 at the widest because you do see it tapers off at the edges here, and has a depth of 0.25 inches. Now it is made of plastic all around. It's a matte finish. Like that really matters because this is going to be sitting behind your sink, behind your hot water heater, behind your toilet. Uh, but let's take a look at the rest. If you see here, there is a blue seam separating the top part from the bottom part. This bottom part here is actually just a cap for the probe sensors here, as well as this rubberized foot right here. Now, the brains live on the top portion, as well as the four included AAA batteries, opening up the roost sensor, and I'll show you the full opening later, but uh, here you see the three included, or sorry, the four included uh, AAA batteries, as well as you can see right there on the back, there are connector ports for the sensing area on the base plate. Uh, and if I can zoom in a little bit there, you can see where the connectors plug in there so that they get powered by the battery here. And to close it back up, and that's what you're gonna have to be careful of, you have to make sure that those pins right there uh, get back into that sensor location there in order to make sure that it actually fits again. So. There you can hear the beep letting you know that the connections are all back up and running. That's also how you can reset the device if you need to pop this open, uh, take the batteries out, wait 10 seconds, and then uh, put the batteries back in. That will reset the device itself. Now, if you need to open it, uh, you kind of pinch on the sides and then gently pry. And this is really difficult to do around a camera. There we go. So you can kind of pry the front open, and then you work your way back along the seam. Back here are where those... Uh, prongs are, so that's why that sits a little longer and is more difficult to open than the front end. Now, you will notice that the metallic sensor here is how you detect if there's water uh, near this device. Now, there's other water sensors out there that have a probe, and I didn't really understand the purpose of having a probe. I'm like, well, I just want to be able to stick this where I stick it. Uh, a probe is useful if uh, this does not fit where you're trying to get to. Uh, in my case, I got it because I wanted to put it behind my hot water heater in my shared basement of my uh, apartment complex, and it does not fully fit behind where I want to put it because I want to keep it out of sight of all the neighbors. Uh, the reason I ended up getting this is, well, because one of my neighbor's hot water heaters, the bottom fell out, just rusted away, didn't bother paying attention, and I hadn't gone into the basement for like two weeks, because I don't go in the basement unless I need something or I'm checking on something. Well, the basement was flooded with four to five inches of water for two weeks. That could have been avoided if I had something like this, because it would have sent me an alert or there's also a audible sound that comes from this device itself. Now, I know with smart home things, you, you have concerns about, well, how hard is it to set up? Well, let me show you how easy it is to set this particular device up.
Now, they have changed the setup process a little bit, so if you are getting this, you might not have to hear that really loud sound to pair this like you did with the Roost Smart Battery review over there. Uh, they both kind of use that to talk to the application. Now, one of the beauty of the Roost products is that they do not need a smart hub in order to function. They use uh, your Wi-Fi router as their smart hub. They, they talk directly to your Wi-Fi router. That's a good and a bad thing when it comes to smart home things. If you don't have a Wi-Fi router that can support a lot of connections, then having too many smart home devices hitting that uh, could hamper your Wi-Fi uh, strength. Uh, the Roost here operates on 802.11, so that's gonna be your 2.4 gigahertz spectrum as opposed to your five gigahertz because this does not need to be really fast. It just needs to be able to be reached in the far uh, areas of your home. Now, the, the beauty and deterrent uh, in Roost, for Roost, in my opinion, is that it doesn't sit on your Wi-Fi network all the time. It checks in periodically, uh, which is partially why they say that the batteries will last for three years. Now, the batteries will last for three years if nothing happens and it's just kind of like doing a standby. So it's checking the humidity in your home and checking the temperature in your home because all that's in here too. That's why I think of this more of as an environmental sensor. And in case the uh, sizes I said before don't mean anything to you, there it is on top of a deck of cards. It's, it's really small. Benagling it behind my hot water heater wasn't working for me. So the question is, does this work? Well, obviously, if I'm doing a review of it, I tested to see if the water sensor would actually work. So here is what it looks like actually sitting in a plate of water to get it to go off and to get it to send a signal to my phone. So there you see, it clearly works. Now, the one problem that I did have is the probes on the bottom here uh, were really sensitive. The only way that I could get the device itself to stop sending out that alert, you know, the alert from here, I was able to turn it off on the phone, but the sound was still coming from the device. I actually had to wipe off the uh, sensors on my pants to dry it off. So the problem that I'm running into at the moment, because I want to put this in my basement, but I can't put this in my basement, is the concrete floor, since it was under, you know, all that water for two weeks, uh, it's sucked up a lot of that moisture and it's sensitive enough that it won't let me put it down without setting off the alarm. And I don't want to have this going off in my basement and annoying my neighbors. So right now it's living under my kitchen sink. So I'm using it as a sensor uh, to keep track of the temperature and humidity in my home, not so much as a leak detector because, well, I know if my kitchen sink is leaking because I spend a lot of time in there. Now, I have talked about the alerts and notifications that you can get to your phone, but let me show you what the application itself looks like for this device. I know it's supported by Android and iOS. This is the Android variant, so let's take a look at that right now. Here you can see the main landing screen of the Roost app. Now, there are several other things on here aside from just the smart detector. You can see I have several smart batteries. Again, review over there if you're interested. So the main page here, it's going to let you do a couple of things. One is gonna let you add something. By clicking the plus sign up here, you can add a new smart battery, a new smart leak detector, new address and monitors. Back to the main homepage, you can come over here, click on the hamburger button, will give you access to your profile, changing your password, invitation. So again, sending out an invitation to somebody who can monitor your home should something happen and you're not able to get to it, this person would be able to contact the authorities on your behalf or come and check out the problem for you. So you have help about and log out. Obviously you do need to create a profile in order to use any of the Roost applications. Now I will state that as you saw when I came over to the hamburger button, there are a few UI things that I really think Roost needs to work on. One being, let me use the Android hardware button to go back in your app. Don't make me click on nothing, because really that's nothing. You're not, all UI design does not say click on the hamburger button again in order to come back to this page. Yes, I can swipe from it, but I want to use the hardware button to go back. It's pet peeve. Here you can change the title of your overall 
area so i just have it at home you can throw in your address information here if you want to obviously i'm not going to have that because you would then know where i live and i don't want that right now so you can change your contact information emergency the number that it calls so let's say you don't use 911 in your location uh, maybe you don't want it to call my 911 maybe you want it to call a family member instead this is where you could set that up and then you come up here and hit save coming back to the main page here everything is fine you see a bunch of green check marks there on my smoke detectors but you are interested in this the sink the moisture detector now notice that it does break it down into locations so here it says kitchen here it has bedroom and then my master bedroom if i had more of these scattered about the house it would lump them into their location so coming over here i can either click on the arrow see again hardware button won't let me do that but it's kind of ingrained in me uh, i can either click on the arrow there to bring me into the kitchen area or i can click on either one of the icons and it will bring me into the kitchen setup now from here kitchen just shows you two things you either have the smart battery for my smoke detector or you have the sink now sink as you can see is listing it is 68 degrees fahrenheit with a relative humidity of 56 percent and it last checked for an update on october 28th at 4 30 a.m and its battery power is good and wi-fi signal is good now the, uh, the look of this is a little different than the setup process that i showed you earlier they have made some changes to the application after that fact but setup will still be relatively the same just you won't be able to pick the picture of what it looks like because of where it is so clicking on the item itself will show you kitchen sink as the location again the battery health and wi-fi signal strength i can come over here to activity and what that will do is that shows me a temperature graph either within the last 24 hours or seven days as well as a humidity graph here. And you can see if you do it within the last 24 hours that it does show you the time of day for both. Now, if I come over to the seven day, well, October, at least in the Eastern part of the US has just been all sorts of crazy. So you can kind of see, uh, you know, my humidity spiking around because temperatures have been rising and falling just arbitrarily for October. It's really weird. Um, while the temperature, because it's inside, has stayed fairly stable because it's inside. Uh, but you can definitely see here the cold weather has finally hit and seems to be sticking around. Leaving it at, at either the 24 or 7 day outlook, if you scroll down, what it will show you is alerts for either high temperature or high humidity. And then, you know, here's your date. Turned it off, turned it on, turned it on, turned it off. It, it lists all that out now again. No hardware button, have to use the back button up there. Uh, that's all based about based in alert settings, which I'm gonna get to, but we're just gonna kind of work down the list here. Changing name and location, if I click on that, this is kind of where I said it was different. No matter where you click, if I click on laundry move, laundry room, it allows me to change the name, but not pick an icon. Same thing, basement, pick the name, not the icon. So I can't say what it is, but I, I see it as a more uh, broadening factor rather than limiting because, well, you can name it anything and not have to worry about finding a picture that correlates with where you're placing it. Coming back over here, technical information is gonna list the SSID, MAC address, last firmware check. Again, I really wish that Roost would let you manually check the firmware, but that's their prerogative to do so. Okay, alert settings coming here. You can set your temperature alerts on or off. Same thing with humidity. In temperature, you can change it to Fahrenheit or Celsius. And here, these are sliders for a range of comfort. So if you don't want it going off within this like really small range of 59 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit, you can expand that out either way. And it won't send you an alert unless it's, unless it's outside of that range. Same thing with humidity, it's just a slider. So anything between 30% and 70%, you will not get an alert about, but anything below that or above that, you will get an alert about. And delete, deletes just that. It deletes this particular item from your Roost overall menu here. And really that that's it. So as you can see, it, it is a very robust device for the size. Now, the big question is pricing. Well, right now it's only available on the Roost website, not on Amazon. Don't know why it's not on Amazon yet, but this will cost you $50. Now, yes, I do understand if you get multiples of these and place them into several locations of your home, that can add up, but water damage can add up a lot more and so can freeze damage that's the beauty of the sensing part here is if the temperature gets below that range you have set well you could set it for when pipes would normally freeze well you could get a freeze freeze warning and know that hey i need to go downstairs warm up my pipes or turn up the heat in my house a little bit so that that does not happen 
Now, I will also state that this has a one year uh, limited warranty from Roost. Now, I have used the warranty twice with one of my Roost smart batteries where they fully replaced the battery twice. One because the uh, computer module part, uh, there was a defect and the other one was the battery drained for you know, no particular reason. Like it, it's supposed to last five years on the Roost smart battery, again, over there. Uh, it did not, it lasted like six months and they replaced it free. So that's the kind of warranty you want with something like this. Should something not function correctly, they are going to replace it within that year time frame. Absolutely free, you don't have to worry about that. So for peace of mind, $50 or however many places you need to stick this, that's not a large investment, and especially if you're just stepping your foot into or dipping your toe into smartening up your home for a smart home. Uh, realistically, there's products out there that are a lot more expensive than this. So this is a good way to start your journey into smart homes. So in case you haven't figured it out yet, I do recommend the Roost Smart Water and Freeze Detector or Roost Leak Detector, depending on where you see them list this. Uh, it has two different names. I'm calling this the Roost uh, Environment Sensor. So I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.